everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right video. Today I'm hacking a washing machine so that I can turn it into a giant salad spinner for all of the salad mixes that I harvest. If you want to get a really good course on how to modify this thing, doing it a really legit way, I recommend checking out Michael Kilpatrick. Um, if you just search his name, I'm going to post a link to his course and website in the description. He was actually an intern for Joel Salatin and he's, you know, he's got a great little farming business going. So yeah, all the kudos and support goes to him. So what I'm going to do, I may end up doing it like him. Uh, you know, his is very clean, all the wiring's done nicely in a box. But I think if I just modify this, and I'll just use the original controls of the machine. So like, I'll use the spin cycle, right? If I just put it on rinse, it'll spin the greens. It just has to drain the water, that's the second function of it. So if you put it at the end of the cycle, it kicks on to the draining mode. And I already tested this with this washer to make sure that it does in fact pump out because when you get one of these old washing machines, you want to ensure that the spinner motor works and that the water pump works to, that exits the water from the machine. Those all work. So I don't know. I'm just going to hack it enough so that I can fit my uh, trash bin in here that, that's going to be spinning. I'm going to take out the middle piece. Uh, I'm taking off the unnecessary parts, and then I'm just going to test it out using my idea just just with controlling the knob and not fully modifying it. So I'm going to test it out. Hopefully it works because this is easy. Anybody could do it. The only miniature anything piece of wiring that I've had to do, which is not really wiring, this is a sensor that's attached to the lid of the door. And if you've ever opened your washing machine while the cycle's going, it usually will turn off. And that's because this is a switch and this lever is attached to the door and it presses a button which tells the motor to kill you know for a safety reason so i've just depressed it just attached this so it'll, it'll believe that it is closed at all times and i'm just gonna plug this back in and if i didn't have this plugged in it wouldn't work So the last thing I need to do before I can kind of test this out is to remove this metal piece right here. And before I do that, I unfortunately, I, I don't want to disconnect any of this stuff because I think this is a pressure sensor. Anyway, so I, what I need to do is cut these two hoses out. I just want to leave everything intact so that I can try my experiment. So I'm going to use an angle grinder to cut through it. It's the best tool that I have to get through this. It should work really well. When I do this, I want to adjust the guard here so that I'm shooting the sparks out away from these wires and away from this plastic hose. If, spark, if sparks hit this rubber hose, it, you know, it probably will melt some of it. So I want to be sure to shoot all the sparks out this way. Okay, this is gonna be a lot smarter. <laughs> so I'm gonna use this to block the sparks and now I can just cut away and not even care. Well, not. I gotta be careful. So this or a piece of wood would be perfect. All right, we're off. Nice. Now I want to just put this back together and bolt it back together. This is exactly how it was. So what we can do with this crazy thing, we could just disconnect it from now because uh, this runs the hot and cold water and we're not even using that circuit. So let's just uh, leave it unplugged. Since I'm not using these, I'm just gonna keep the, li the wires clean and out of the way. So I'm just gonna attach the back piece and this goes back on. I have to take off the center of this somehow. All right, so my last step is gonna be getting this center piece out so my trash can fits in there. Hmm. So I, I have Michael Kilpatrick's course, so I just went and looked up how to get this thing off and he just smashes it off with a hammer and then at the bottom there's supposed to be a nut to take it off. And then I also saw that he, there's this, this plastic ring on here, you can take that off as well. So, actually, I don't think I'm going to do that. Because my plastic ring has these little... I'm going to leave it intact. 
I'm just gonna take the center out. It looks like there's something under here. Like, it might have screws? I don't know. You know, let's just get the angle grinder in there. There it is! Yay! Now I can see a nut on there. Now once I unhook that, this whole thing should pop out. Luckily I have some extension. Socket wrench extension. And it's a 12 millimeter. There we go. Bye -bye. Yeah. Done. There it is. So now we got that crazy thing. gonna connect the door switch right there and then I'll tape this up out of the way I'll throw my trash can in there and throw some water in there turn it on and try to get it to work like I want trash can so Michael Kilpatrick uses these other like wash bin totes um, but Curtis Stone he for his is he uses like one of these shove it down in there and then I'm gonna drill holes in this can so um, when you throw the greens in here it drains out okay so it's gonna sit in there like that let's just first see if it spins there it goes it so here's the reason why I didn't remove the, the plastic ring those rubber bands help with the friction So you know what, I think maybe the water drains somewhere else in the cycle. The last step is to build my greens bubbler, and then I've got the whole production system from the Farmer's Friend Greens Cut Harvester, then you put it in the bubbler, then you put it in the spinner, and then to the drying table with fans. And those four pieces of equipment are what make growing greens such a highly profitable and then actually becomes easy once you have these pieces of infrastructure. Very happy that I don't have to do any more work to this thing. I'm gonna make this thing work a lot better. You know, I could even I could even remove this switch and, and the wiring and move it out. Um, I may do that in the future, but right now I want to get it working so I can use it for market tomorrow. So now all I have to do is I'm gonna drill a bunch of half-inch holes all over this crazy thing, and this is gonna be my clean receptacle that fits inside of this. So I'm gonna clean this out really well too. I'll be drilling holes in this tonight, cleaning it, and then it's gonna be ready to go and I'm gonna get to use it tomorrow, so very stoked. So I'm gonna drill this using a half inch drill bit and I'm gonna make as many holes as I can without losing too much strength. Check out Curtis Stone's video about his, kind of see his whole design too, but obviously if you're seeing mine, it's, it's basically the same thing. So, all right guys, let's drill this thing. All right, 20 minutes later, all done. So obviously I still gotta remove all these plastic pieces and what I can do is come back with a, a razor blade or straight edge and just if you put it in the hole and then scrape it a little bit, these come out really quickly. It's kind of hard to get them. So some of them flush perfectly. But look, it's still on there. And you know, I could sit here all day and, and then it eventually comes off. You kind of swirl the drill, it comes off. Michael Kilpatrick's new videos, he actually uses a just a basket with a bunch of holes in it already. You now I don't know what size or you know, I didn't know where to find it. So I just went with a trash can that I knew would work and drilled the holes, it's a lot more work. I recommend getting the baskets. See how it doesn't totally fit. You just need to put some spacers in here so that it keeps it snug in there and then it would work perfectly. These little totes are a great option. They can't hold as many greens as a trash can can, but almost exactly the same. What I've discovered after drilling the holes is that if you kind of run your hands along the barrel, I've washed this really well, so 
It's hard to see it now. It's basically all gone, but there was a lot of plastic particles, so you want to be sure to clean this really well. I want this to be a totally sterile and particle-free container, and if I can't get it particle-free, then I just won't use it. And so I just really recommend that you use Michael Kilpatrick's, um, what he uses now is just like a laundry basket with a bunch of holes. So the Dremel, you know, at that high rate of speed, it almost just kind of melts the plastic, which cauterizes it. You know, there's no flakes that come off of it. So all I really need to do now is just go and wash it and just scrub it really well. And I might even use one of my, um, if we're washing like uh, cast iron pans, you know, those little metal scrubbers, I might use that out here. And just, it'll help take off any of these extra tags that are still um, hanging on here. And then that's it. And I'm going to wash it with dish soap and some vinegar, get it nice and clean. Then I'm going to ensure, I'm going to take a a white paper towel and get it wet and then wipe it across so that any black dust would really stand out if I wipe the you know around the whole thing I don't see that then it's good to go it's clean and then I can begin to use it and here's that little just metal scrubber I was talking about So I finally got all the plastic fibers off. I had to scrub it a couple times with the metal thing, then I'd spray it off. Then I dry rubbed it with a new microfiber towel each time. And I had to do that that four times. And now when I did the microfiber towel, there's nothing else coming off. I'm just gonna spray it down one more time and then use a paper towel because it's white and this is black. It'll just show up really well to see if there is any particles left. Nice. Nothing. The outside. Nothing. Cool. So that was the trick. You just have to do it a bunch of times. No plastic. Yay. So this is ready to go. I just noticed something that when I put the trash can in, it is rubbing against this metal piece. So I just need to cut that off really quick. And that's all it takes. And then it's just like if you were to send it through a salad spinner and it's done. So it's almost dry, but it needs a little bit more moisture off of there so that it lasts really well in plastic bags. So that's when I take it over here to my drying table and I've got a couple fans on there to help it dry. And then it just takes another five minutes or so to dry it up. 